Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another week of what's for dinner. If you're new here, hello and welcome. I am Taylor and I share these what's for dinner videos every week to hopefully give you guys some new meal ideas and to motivate you to cook more for your family. I've been doing these videos for three or four years now and they help motivate myself to cook more for my family because I know I'm going to be sharing it with y'all and I really like trying new recipes. So if you like these videos, I hope that you will subscribe down below. I've got quite a few yummy dinners to share with you this week. So I'm gonna go ahead and get into the video. First up, I tried a new recipe for a baked ziti. I started off by bringing some salted water to a boil to cook my noodles. And I couldn't find any ziti, so I just used rigatoni. And then I also started off by browning some mild Italian sausage. So once my sausage was browned, I used a little paper towel trick to kind of remove any of that excess grease from the sausage. It's just quick and easy and I don't have to like remove the sausage from the pan. So I like to do that when there's not too much grease. And then I went in and I added about five cloves of minced garlic, as well as two teaspoons of dried oregano, a teaspoon of basil, um, some salt and some pepper and then I let that garlic and the spices like saute with the sausage for about a minute. After letting the garlic and the spices saute with the meat for a minute, I went in with my tomatoes. I added a 28 ounce can of crushed tomatoes. The recipe said to do tomato sauce, but I used crushed tomatoes instead. And then a 15 ounce can of diced tomatoes. And I just mixed that together really well and then let it simmer over a medium low heat for 10 minutes. After letting the sauce simmer for 10 minutes, I stirred in one teaspoon of sugar and some fresh chopped basil. Next, in a medium bowl, I prepared the like cheese mixture. So I beat together two eggs, 16 ounces of cottage cheese, one cup of shredded Parmesan cheese, and one cup of cubed mozzarella. This mozzarella that I'm using was from Wisconsin, and it was so good. Um, it wasn't like fresh mozzarella, like, you know, the like wet, squishy kind of fresh mozzarella. It was just like the harder mozzarella, but it was still better than any other mozzarella I've ever had like that. When my noodles were done, I set them to the side and I used that pot to thicken some cream. So I added in one cup of cold heavy cream and then I whisked in one teaspoon of cornstarch until there were no lumps and I set that pot over a medium heat and brought it to a very low simmer. I stirred it really often and let it thicken. It probably took about three to five minutes. Once the cream had thickened, I turned off the heat and then I added in that cottage cheese mixture that we made as well as one cup of red sauce and I stirred that together really well. Then I added my cooked pasta to this cream mixture, stirred it around really well, and then I transferred it to a grease 9x13 baking dish. Then 
Then I took the remaining red sauce and spread it evenly over top of the pasta. I was sure this thing was going to like overflow this pan, but it did not. So once I had all the sauce evenly spread out over the noodles, I topped this with another cup of chopped up mozzarella and half a cup of Parmesan cheese. And then I covered this with foil. Um, be sure to spray your foil with some nonstick cooking spray because you don't want it to stick to the cheese. Um, another thing that I like to do, which I don't know that I really showed it, but um, I like to stick toothpicks in the top, kind of like sticking up out. So it helps keep the foil lifted up off of the casserole. I do that anytime I need to put foil like on top of cheese, as well as spraying the foil with some cooking spray so it doesn't stick to the cheese. And then this went in the oven at 375 for 25 minutes. And then after the 25 minutes, I took the foil off and baked it for another 25 minutes. And here's what it looked like when it was done. Um, you could broil this for a little bit longer if you wanted to. I didn't need to. It was nice and browned on top. But if you wanted it a little bit more brown, you could definitely broil it. We just served this with a side salad. And this ziti was definitely one of the best ziti's I've ever made. It was just, I don't know what it was about it. If it was the cheese or what. It was so good. Saturday night, I tried another recipe from mashupmom.com. This one is a fish and veggie sheet pan dinner. It was supposed to have asparagus, but the asparagus I Aldi was not looking too hot so I just left that off and I started off by making the sauce to coat the veggies so for that I started off by melting two tablespoons of butter in a small bowl and then I stirred in about three cloves of minced garlic one teaspoon of coarse ground mustard one teaspoon of parsley and then it called for tarragon but she said you could sub the tarragon for basil or oregano so I did some oregano and then a fourth of a teaspoon of crushed red pepper, some salt and pepper. And I stirred that together and set it to the side to put my potatoes and carrots in. For my carrots, I washed two good sized carrots and then I just sliced them up and added them to that butter mixture. And then for the potatoes, I used a bag of the like mini gold potatoes and I washed those. And then some of them I sliced in like quarters and some of them were like in like eighths it just depended on the size of the potato i know some of you uh, are like you you said halves or you said quarters but then some of them you only cut in half it's because some of the size of those can like really vary like some of them are really small and i don't want them to like be mush so i cut them to make them about as even in size as i can <laughs> So once I had everything cut up, I tossed it in a sauce mixture to make sure everything was coated really well. And then I added my potatoes and carrots to a sheet pan that had lined with some parchment paper just so that nothing sticks. And then those went in the oven on 425 for 25 minutes. While that was baking, I worked on my fish. So in the same bowl that I made the sauce in before, I made the sauce to coat the fish. So I melted three more tablespoons of butter. I added two teaspoons of that same coarse ground mustard, about another three cloves of garlic. Instead of tarragon, I did oregano again, a fourth of a teaspoon of crushed red pepper, some salt and black pepper. Then I took my fish and I dipped it in that mixture that we made and laid it on another baking sheet that was lined with parchment paper. The fish that I am using are some cod fillets. Next time I'm going to try this with tilapia. That's what the original recipe was for, was for tilapia, but she said you could use different types of fish. Um, but we just didn't really care for the cod. We like cod, but um, we prefer it like pan fried. I don't know if I'm overcooking it when I bake it or what but the flavor of this was really good we just don't like the cod after the potatoes and carrots were done at the 25 minutes i took them out stirred them around and then i put both sheet pans back in there for another 13 minutes
To go with this, I just made a can of green beans and I already told you how we felt about the cod, but um, I will definitely try this recipe again because we really love the flavor of it. Just for some reason, we don't like the cod. It, I don't know. I don't know what it is, but these carrots and potatoes were amazing. I will definitely make that sauce mixture that goes on them again, even if I end up not liking it on tilapia either, but I think we will like it on tilapia. We love tilapia. We've never not liked tilapia any way that I've made it. So I can't wait to try this again with some tilapia. It is Sunday and tonight for dinner we are doing cheeseburgers and some Parmesan potatoes that I'm gonna make in the air fryer. I am using this pleasing seasoning um, that I picked up in Wisconsin. If you saw our um, like Wisconsin haul, um, you saw this and it smells good. So I think it's gonna be good. I went on their website and found their catalog and it had some recipes in it. So that's where this recipe is coming from. I will leave a link to their website down below so you can check it out if you are interested. So it says I'm gonna need six medium potatoes, three tablespoons of butter, one and a half teaspoons of whichever seasoning you want. They say you can make it with their original, their Greek, or their tasty too. And then half a cup of grated Parmesan cheese. So I'm gonna melt three tablespoons of this butter, which we also picked up in Wisconsin. And then um, I'm gonna cut up six of these potatoes. It says to peel them. I'm not gonna peel them, I'm gonna wash them and then just cut them up. And then I will toss them in this bowl with the butter, the pleasing, and the Parmesan cheese. And then it says to bake it at 375 for 30 to 45 minutes. I'm gonna put them in the air fryer on 400 for probably about 25 minutes until they're nice and crispy. Um, Cause I don't wanna heat up the whole house with the oven. I'd rather use the air fryer since it's summer and it's hot already. And then for my burgers, I'm just gonna patty them out and season them on both sides with some salt and pepper. And then for our cheese, we're gonna be opening up this 10 year cheddar cheese to see how that is. Get out some buns, lettuce, tomato, that kind of thing. But I'm just gonna go ahead and start working on my potatoes. And then once my potatoes are almost done, I will cook my burgers.
Okay, here is our plates. This one is mine. I've got one of those everything brioche buns that I picked up at Aldi the other week. Um, I froze two of them and they froze great. Um, I just pulled those out this morning and let them thaw on the counter. And then I did cut up tomato and I've got lettuce, but I decided I just wanted like a simple cheeseburger. So I've just got the burger, the 10 year old sharp cheddar, um, and some ketchup and mustard. And this 10 year cheddar is sharp, like it's really sharp. Elijah did not like it. Um, that's why you saw me put American cheese on one of the burgers. Cause he was like, no way, I do not want that. It's also very soft, so it started to kind of crumble. It was a little bit hard to slice, but it's gonna be delicious on this burger. So I just stuck with that. And then I've got our potatoes. I already tasted the potatoes. They are delicious, um, even though there's not that much to it. But that pleasing seasoning, let's see, what does it say it has in it? it probably just says like spices or something. Um, it's a delicious, easy to use blend meant for the creative and hurried cook. Use in place of salt and pepper, using your favorite recipes. Okay, yeah, salt, spices, MSG, onion, and garlic. And MSG is why it's so good. I know some people don't like eating MSG, but it's also in the body of complete that I use. And it's delicious. So if you don't have a problem with MSG, check out the body of complete or even that pleasing. Um, you can probably only find the pleasing. Um, online unless you live in the like southwestern area of Wisconsin like near La Crosse because that's where the pleasing store is is in La Crosse and you can order it online though I'm not sure how much exactly it costs I'm going to most likely be looking into that because it is delicious and they have a lot of different seasoning blends so I also have a Claus and pickle with mine Lily just has potatoes that cheddar cheese Elijah has American, like I said, potatoes and a class and pickle. And they are using these artisanal buns from Aldi. This is the first time I'd ever seen them there. And um, yeah, they look good. They're nice and soft. But um, I haven't actually tried them yet. This will be the first night we try them. And then we'll eat them again later in the week for our barbecue sandwiches. But uh, that is going to be dinner for Sunday. Okay, it is Monday night. And tonight for dinner, we are going to do chicken enchiladas. I've got two breasts in here. Um, they're still partially frozen. I had them like thawing in the fridge overnight, but they didn't thaw out all the way. But that is okay. They will cook perfectly fine in the crock pot. I'm just going to cook them on low all day. Um, it's pretty early in the day still. And then if you remember back on my birthday, I had made salsa chicken in the crock pot. And there was a lot of liquid in there. And I ended up draining it off. It was like a broth. Um, it's still a little bit frozen. Um, there's a little bit of chicken in there, um, but it was mostly just like the salsa and like the broth that had cooked off of the chicken. Um, and I was thinking like that would be really good in enchiladas or in like a chicken um, taco soup or chicken enchilada soup. Uh, so I saved it and I froze it and now I'm going to add that to the chicken. And then the only other thing I'm going to add is one small can of enchilada sauce. And then I'm just going to let this cook all day on low as I said. And then this evening, I'll shred this up. We'll add some more enchilada sauce if we need it. I don't know that we will. Um, and then I've got like some corn tortillas, some cheese and whatnot. And we'll have some delicious enchiladas later. But I think that's going to turn out really good. That um, stuff that I had from the salsa chicken has a lot of flavor. So I think that's going to make this chicken really, really great. Okay, it's almost 6 o'clock. I am ready to throw these enchiladas in the oven. So my chicken is done. I'm going to take the lid off of this. I've got our chicken. It smells amazing in here. Um, I'm going to take the chicken out, put it in my KitchenAid, and shred it up. And then I will assemble my enchiladas. I'm going to use corn tortillas. I'm going to fry these up in a little bit of oil. I'm not going to show that. It's pretty self-explanatory. Put a little bit of oil in your pan and heat them up a little bit on both sides so they like don't crack and break and they fold these here. I'm using these two pans because my 9x13 is dirty um, in the fridge from the ziti. There's still a little bit of ziti left um, that needs to be eaten and uh, so that's in the fridge. So I'm just going to use these two and make it work. Um, we are just doing chicken and cheese. I'm not sure if I'm gonna need any more enchilada sauce. I think what's in there is gonna be fine. Um, I haven't decided yet. Probably just gonna use what's in there. And spread a little bit in the pan, assemble the enchiladas, put them on top. Um, as I said, chicken and cheese, just doing some cheddar cheese. And then I'll put some more of the sauce on top with some more cheese and bake it for probably about 30 minutes at 350. 
To go with our enchiladas, I just made some black beans and then I seasoned them with, where did I put it? The Goya Sassonador Total, the perfect seasoning. It is similar to the Badia Complete, but this one has um, cumin in it. So it's really good in black beans and things like that. Black beans and chicken is what I've used it on, but it's a giant thing. It looks like I barely use any of it, but it is really good. Um, I just don't use it for everything like the Abadia because it does have cumin in it. So I don't like it on everything, but that's what all I did for the black beans. And I have topped my enchiladas with a little bit of lettuce, a little bit of the Sam's Club fresh cilantro salsa, a little bit of sour cream, and then some of this street taco sauce from Aldi just to give it a little bit of spice because this is medium um, and that is my plate these are the kids plates they don't have anything on their enchiladas they just have enchiladas and beans but that is going to be dinner for Monday night it is Tuesday and tonight for dinner we are having cereal well at least the kids are um, we had a late lunch today at like three o'clock because we were at the car dealership at lunchtime buying Andy a new car um, so we didn't eat lunch until late, so we're not, we weren't hungry for like a big dinner and we decided not to cook and just kind of eat whatever we could find and the kids wanted cereal. So Lily is having Frosted Flakes, Elijah is having Rice Krispies, and whenever me and Andy eat something later, I will show y'all what we eat. Okay, here is what I'm having for dinner. Um, if you saw my Wisconsin grocery haul, you've seen most of these items. This is some lefsa, which I guess I didn't explain in the haul what it really is, because um, I had a couple questions about it. The best way I can describe it is that it's kind of like a tortilla, but it's made with potatoes. And the way I've always eaten it, like the way my dad showed me how to eat it, was just to spread some butter on it and roll it up. So I've got some butter on it, rolled it up. So I've got two of those and then some of those beef sticks that I also picked up in Wisconsin and some cheese curds from Wisconsin and then some cantaloupe. And that is going to be my little like snack plate dinner. This is the left set that I have and you can order this online. So if you're interested in trying it, you can order it online um, and it freezes too. So you can order like a bunch of it and then freeze it. Um, I haven't tried the other brand yet, but somebody said that this one is the best one. And this is the one that I always remember my dad buying. Comes in a triangle. The other one we got is in a rectangle shape. But um, yeah, that is what I'm having for dinner. And if I remember, I will show you whatever Andy eats. 
Okay, it is Wednesday night and tonight for dinner we are having pulled pork sandwiches and I of course forgot to pull my meat out but it's okay, it's pretty early in the morning and it'll be fine in the crock pot on high all day which is what I'm going to do. So this is a pork loin and to it I'm going to sprinkle on just a little bit of this apple wood rub. Um, I think I got this on Markdown. No, I got this one at Dollar Tree. Um, like a year ago I think. But it's almost gone. It's pretty good. So I'm going to sprinkle on some of that. And then I have a new barbecue sauce to use today. My friend Kat over at Southern Herman Kitchen sent me George's original barbecue sauce. This is from Nashville, North Carolina. This is what she says is a true North Carolina barbecue sauce. And a true North Carolina barbecue sauce is like vinegar based. And I love vinegar based sauces. Um... There's a couple places here in Georgia that have like a vinegar based sauce as well as other sauces. But every time I've tried it, it's been delicious. So I'm excited to try this. You'll notice it's like very liquidy because as I said, it's vinegar based. I think the first ingredient is vinegar. Where is it? Yeah. Vinegar, water, tomato concentrate, tomato paste, sugar, apples, salt, high fructose corn syrup, corn syrup, red pepper, and spices. So, because it has apples in it, that's why I decided to use the applewood rub. I think that would go together well. So, got that on there. I'm going to pour on, I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to do the whole bottle. That is kind of a big chunk of meat. I don't know if I should do the whole bottle or half of a bottle. Hmm. Let's see. That's about half of it. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do the whole bottle, man. Maybe not the whole bottle. We'll do three quarters of the bottle and leave it like that for now and then I'll have a little bit extra to add to it later if it needs a little bit more sauce. Um, as I said, I'm going to put the lid on this and cook it on high all day. Okay, our pork has been cooking all day. Now I'm going to take my little meat chopper thing, this thing, and crush this up, shred it up. And just let it sit in those juices on warm until we are ready to eat. And um, it'll probably be about an hour. I'm going to make some ultimate baked beans. And those are going to cook in the oven for about an hour. So this will just sit and kind of absorb that barbecue sauce and juices until we are ready to eat dinner. Okay, I intended to share this recipe with y'all. It's called ultimate baked beans and I found it on Pinterest and you just see take like a can of baked beans, some bacon, some onions, some brown sugar, garlic, ketchup, mustard, and I think that was it. I don't know. You'll see me make it. Um, I'm going to link the recipe down below if you really want to try it or you want to like put it on a list of do not try because my family did not like it. I did not like it and nobody else liked it. Um, having just the regular old baked beans would have just been better but i was just trying to try something new and like fancy up a can of baked beans it did not work out it was a fail we hated it so i ended up wasting all of this because it was just not good it was not good for our family so um i would not recommend this recipe so i am not going to really show the whole process of me making it but this is what it looked like, and um, yeah. And the pork was really good. The barbecue sauce was really good. We actually topped it with one of the other barbecue sauces that we had, the Kansas City one. And then I made some corn in the air fryer, which I've showed a couple times. I will have that link down below if you're interested in that. So corn and pork was good, but that those beans, don't try them, don't try them. And thank you, Kat, for sending me that barbecue sauce. You're so sweet, and we liked it. Okay, it is Thursday night, and tonight for dinner we are doing nachos, and I used the leftover pulled pork from last night's dinner to make it super easy. And then we've got the Rico's nacho cheese that I pulled out of the freezer, and then I topped this with some lettuce, green onion, some of this fresh salsa from Sam's Club, um, and some sour cream, and I think that's it. And that's my plate. Lily just has cheese and meat and chips, and then some salsa on the side. And Elijah has meat and cheese and chips and a little bit of lettuce. But that is going to be our dinner for Thursday. That is going to be it for this week's What's for Dinner. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. And if you plan on trying any of these recipes, I'd love to hear from you in the comments down below. And let me know what you plan on trying. And let me know if you've tried any of these before. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. And I will see you all in the next one. Bye.